All right, Sage, so we use the K-Pix a lot. I finally got mine set up at home. What kind of tips and tricks can you give me to help me be a little more effective with using it? Okay, so the first thing I want to go over with you is, see this little fancy thing right here? It's called a hold down. Now, I've shown you how to use it in previous videos, but oh, yeah. we've combined it all into this video. Um, it's, <clears throat> if I'm cutting at 90, and I put pressure here, the blade as you're sliding with the saw is holding it up against here, okay? <clears throat> but it's not when, it's not if, it's when you're gonna get caught and it's gonna be, the, the, bla uh, the blade will bind in the material and okay. you'll get kickback. So I will always say this, it will get you if you don't use a hold down. And it's not if, it's when. Gotcha. And I want to reiterate that to anybody who's getting uh, up and running with a saw. Okay? So, boy, that was me being serious, huh? <laughs> okay, so this, this hold down is really great. And here's the reason it's great. It can switch sides easily. You got a little flat spot here, and there's a hole out back here. And Chris, come back here so you can see this. See that hole right there? You have one here, you have one on the other side. Okay, and this is woodworking 101 when you're using this, is when you put it in, you slide it around, and you bring it down, and it locks it down. But what I like to do is push it up here a little so it cocks back, bring it in, and now you have a really sound uh, hold down. But here's what I mean by woodworking 101. When you have to do repetitive cuts, and you see this right here, and if you don't have a hold down here, see that right there? Okay, see how it's now a captured cut between the blade and here? Mm -hmm. Okay. You always put the hole down here. I've seen people with longer pieces put it over here, and that will bind and come and get you. So whenever you look at a stop here, and it is a captured cut, that is where you must use the hole down. Remember, lift it up here, bring it down, and lock it in, and it's really great. So the second thing I want to show you is you see how we have it lined up here. We're locked down, and to make the cut, Big Day, you, and I'm gonna ha I'm gonna show you. You're gonna take it out. You're gonna start it. You're gonna bring it down and bring it into the cut and slide forward. Okay. Watch. I'll do one and then you do one. Watch. And always keep it down in the cut before you bring it up. Because you see this little piece, this could have wobbled, grabbed the side of the tooth, and kicked back. Okay, but if you leave it sit there, it's easier and it's safer. Nice. There we go. It's about the best cut I've ever seen. <laughs> Another basic part I want to show you is right here. This is uh, how to set the um, miter. Okay. Okay, this is your miter scale. Up top here is bevel scale. We'll go over that momentarily. But to switch it, I press here. Okay. And I'm going to cut a 45. I'm going to bring it over to 45. There's a pause and stop here. And Chris, make sure you get this. We're going to lock it down. Okay. We'll bring it in. Now, this is really important. Uh, we're going to do a whole series of cutting miters and joining miters later this year. And I wanted to point this out. This is where a hold down is critical. Now, you know how we were just going like this and using the hold down? I told you to use the hold down because it's really not going to move on you if you don't use a hold down because you are putting pressure and sliding up against the fence. But here, I don't care how much you hold it with your hand, this saw when it's cutting like this, it's actually pushing this piece. So this is where it's critical. I'll tell everybody to get a really great miter on a slide compound miter saw. Make sure you use a hold down. And here we go. So that 
that's and the other thing too is make sure that this is locked down when you're cutting those miters you'll get an absolutely perfect miter when you cut all right so back here this green i don't know if you can see this but the green knob back here has the angles on it that's a little bit confusing to me can you yes yeah, switch positions right. I'll, I'll show you okay so this is the bevel setting i'll go through bevels with you all right uh as i release this you already know that's how you set it for bevel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this knob, if you read it, 0 to 45, it'll go to, and I'm just going to dismantle this a little bit, take this off for now, um, it goes 0 to 45, and as I'm looking here, to the left. But here's something that's funny that I, I see people, and mine won't go all the way. Well, it's because when you're beveling, you got to take it, the fence is off. Okay, if you're gonna go. Oh, okay. Uh, so I wanna point this out too. See this little point right in here, okay? When you first get your capex, and you should clean this out and periodically lube it, but there's a little two millimeter hex right in there. That is prow here, it catches there, so you gotta turn that down. Okay. Okay, or actually take it out. All right, so your fence won't come off if that is standing proud, which I think Festool does when they ship it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off and now I can go to 45 this way, see that? Okay. Cool. Okay, now, here's a thing that I've seen people make mistakes on before, is to go to the right, You ha this is what the knob's for. You lose that positive stop at zero, but you can go to the right. So I'm gonna have you take that fence off. Okay. And it's a simple cam and it slides right off, okay? And now I can go 45 to the right and 45 to the left. Okay. Okay, pretty simple. Now if I want to go to 47. Oh. All right, because this goes to 47, okay? <laughs> Why would you want to go to 47? I have no clue. So when you're setting crown or any kind of miter that's on the wall um, or doing a tapered column, it doesn't matter if it's relieved in the back because you never see the back. So for walls that are out, out of 90 or whatever, you kind of want just that long point to, uh, visually mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what's behind there. So oh. it's for un uneven walls and stuff like that. So 47 is huge. It's so long point to long point on bevels will match. But I'm gonna bring it back here, zero to 45, and that cursor should line right up, and that's how you lock it in. Perfect. Oh, hang on a second, let's do a, let's do a bevel. Let's bring it uh, this way. We'll set it at 45. Okay, once again, everybody, this is paramount that you use the hole down. And I'm just gonna bring it right on in like this. Lock it in and let's make that 45. And there you go. Perfect again. So here's a quick adjustment. We have, and I showed Big D how to set the bevel already, but you see that positive stop and I have it locked in? Let's look at the cursor right here. From my eye, that is not lining perfectly at zero, and we're getting a perfect 90 degree cut. So I'm gonna come in here. This is a quick maintenance calibration. It's a number 15 Torx, and I'll adjust the cursor right where it needs to be, dead on zero. And that's a quick uh, maintenance tip for you. Another tip I wanna show you, it's a little maintenance tip, is I love these chip brushes, they're cheap. Okay, I'll come in here okay and I'll get all that sawdust out okay just get it out of here for your fences okay because sometimes over time these are hard to take in and out and then I'll just do this I'll hit it right here some of this dry lube let it dry but also in here and on this milled part right here let it dry and these should slide right back in like this Okay, and big D, I'll have you do this side over okay. here and just clean that out and then hit that lube in there. And on the back side there, just on those mill surfaces and that should just gotcha. slide right in just right. Now yours, your K-Pax is brand new, you shouldn't have any of the problem. Just remember that to turn that down. Mm -hmm. To get the fence off? Yep. Okay. 
show that camera. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. There Good we go. <laughs> All right, Sid. So your slide's really, really nice. What can you tell me about that? Okay, so um, it's just basic maintenance. Make sure that these rods that they slide on are really clean. Okay, and I'll go through a few maintenance things with you on this. Okay, make sure it's clean, all the sawdust is off, and you know I love this. This is called PG2000, Pure Gold 2000. Uh, just a little's a lot with this, and there's no corrosion on these because I periodically do this on here. Also, um, I think I've shown this before, but while I have the PG out, see how that locks in? Mm -hmm. That gives you that um, uh, 120 uh, millimeter capacity for doing a base. Okay. Four and three quarter, okay, because the depth, it locks in the head and changes the height. Okay, so you have that cutting capacity toward the back. And, and every, once, every once in a while, that gets hung up. So hopefully, Chris, you can come in here, good angle. And you see this little part right in here? I just like to take a little PG while I'm at it and come right in here and just lubricate that pivot point in there. And it really makes it that much easier for you. Nice. So that's another point of maintenance for you. Okay, while I'm thinking about it, you see how the head comes down really smooth? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris, come in here. I want to point it out for everybody. Right in here, there's a couple other places it may hesitate. Right in here, and you see right in here, that little washer. Okay, what I do is I like to take a little PG and put it in here, okay? And just a little in there. So that's why it's really smooth. Those are just some basic maintenance tips that I do, okay? All right, Sedge, so you're giving quite a bit already. What else you got? Okay, I don't want to get you too confused on, I just want you to get cutting on it. Okay. Okay, and you'll learn a lot more than what I, we'll, we'll go through other tips and tricks as, as you get used to your capex. But there's going to be a time when you're going to look at your laser and you're going to say, holy moly, mine isn't as crystal clear as that. It's because you may be cutting pitchy woods and stuff like that. And uh, what happens is your lens gets clogged. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's what everybody says. There's actually a, a protective lens right here. You see it? And you can't take it out. You can snap it, but you can't take it out. So what you have to do is you have to take a posi dry screwdriver and right here, okay, you just give it like uh, two turns. That loosens the locking mechanism and then this comes out. Okay, so what happens, and I've seen this a hundred times, see this, how this is kind of translucent and this is transparent, okay? And it, you see mine starting to get scratched a little, but what happens is this will get gummed up mm -hmm. with some uh, pitch, okay? And what you do, or resin, and what you do is you just clean that pot there and put it in. That's why mine remain, remain crystal clear. And if I'm to read this right, mine's the 2007 Capex, and this thing is still humming perfect. Okay, so one of the top things I'll tell everybody is make sure you clean your lens periodically on your laser. There's still much more to come uh, to learn about the Capex on this channel, but as we always say, <laughs> be positive and stay sharp. <laughs> <laughs>